Let's uh, shift gears. Scott Salmon is Hockey Canada's Vice President of Hockey Operations. Big uh, media conference coming up at 1.30 Eastern time. We will carry it live on Sportsnet as Team Canada names its coaching staff for the World Cup of Hockey in 2016 in Toronto. Scott, thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So how extensive was this search? You just uh, you turned over every yeah. rock and uh, and just you finally, you finally came across this Babcock guy. Yeah, we, you know, we actually were talking about putting out an application, but uh, I think just with, uh, with Mike's experience, obviously it was a fairly simple decision <clears throat> led by Doug Armstrong and our management group. And, you know, when you talk about what Mike's accomplished for us, not only, you know, at the Olympic Games, but at the World Juniors, at uh, the Men's World Championships and his success in short-term competition, he, he was the obvious choice for us. Obviously, Joel Quenville and his success in the NHL, <clears throat> to be able to add him to the staff and, and for him to accept, I think, his is tremendous and it just gives us a lot of depth uh, in in the whole coaching you know uh, staff scott did it did it ever come to a, a conversation joel as a head coach or was it was it it never got there because yeah, you, you'd think with the stanley yeah. cups you would think about a, a change possibility yeah absolutely and you know i think that's part of the process and i don't think we'd be doing our job if we didn't talk about it so as much as we've got a lot of respect for mike and all of our management group do uh, we have, you know, an equal amount of, uh, of respect for Joel and what he's accomplished. And so at the end of the day, uh, for us to be able to get both is a real win. And I think at the end of the day also, it's just uh, Mike and his international experience and, and his short-term competition experience, um, you know, we think is real good. And I think we've surrounded him with people that have an opportunity probably to carry the torch going forward, whether that's 2018, 2022. And, and obviously that's depending on if the NHL is part of the Olympic Games, but certainly sets us up well for the future. So no truth to the rumor that Joel Quimble was going to be your head coach until they lost after scoring five goals in the first period last night against St. Louis. Well, I, that might have helped. Don't forget, Doug Armstrong's our, our manager. Oh, good so point. He might, might yes. Have yes. Now, was there any consideration of the fact that if, in fact, you did hire Quenville, Babcock wouldn't be an assistant and you would lose him? And right. also, who broke the news to Ken Hitchcock? <laughs> Those are all... Those are all good questions. I think, first of all, um, and I don't expect you're going to answer them truthfully. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was never an expectation or a discussion about Mike Babcock being an assistant. Uh, I think we were talking about two different head coaches, and at the end of the day, like I said, came through that process with with Mike and and then in regards to Hitch and and also Lindy Ruff, two guys who are you know have done a tremendous amount of work for Hockey Canada in the past and have been very successful, um, you know, as Hockey Canada. Um, and as our management group, we've reached out to those guys, especially Ken is very understanding. He's, he's had a lot of experiences, and he's been very good to us, and he's had the great fortune of winning a lot of, uh, of championships with us. So he was real understanding. Did you say you he know, was I, understanding? You're joking, right? I, I, no, actually, he was real understanding. And I, in fact, I had a, another conversation this morning with Doug Armstrong, and, and we talked about Hitch, and he said he was very understanding, and, and you know, he's been very fortunate. He's been around. Uh, you know, 2002 and world championships in between. So he's a guy who's uh, who's done a lot and he was understanding. And uh, I think he understands that it's time for someone else to get that opportunity. Scott Salmond, Hockey Canada Vice President of Hockey Operations, joining us ahead of the announcement, uh, formally introducing the Team Canada coaching staff for the 2016 World Cup of Hockey coming up at 1.30 on Sportsnet. What, uh, where do you guys go from here, Scott? Uh, what's the breakdown now in terms of gathering information uh what can you tell us about that process well i can tell you it's it started and uh we've uh, we've actually submitted everyone submitted their depth chart number three this week and we'll meet in toronto around the gm meetings on monday um to start to look again and see where we are and taking into consideration last year the world championships and the start of this year uh, even though it's a small sample size we'll continue to do that and meet again in january um you know with the intention that march 1st uh, we'll announce our 16 players and then fill that in uh, from June 1st with the remaining seven. So, you know, I think we've got a tremendous group of managers. Uh, we've also added uh, Craig Berube, Maury Gare, um, who are helping cover some players in our on our watch list as well. So, you know, I, I mean, I think a lot of people think it's, it's an all-star team. It's easy. You could watch TV and pick it, but I, the process is very good. Uh, a lot of great discussion and uh, a lot of different names on those lists. Are you going to have ESPN come into your final meetings? <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure. That's a good question. I doubt it. I doubt it. 
What are you, uh, what are you uh, getting at there? Brian Burke. The, okay. uh, right. Do you remember that? Listen, uh, he's a smartass. What you, date? Are what you date? learning that now? <laughs> what date is the uh, train official uh, first day of training camp? What are you Scott? booking your tr your summer holiday yeah, plans? Yeah, I want to know when I have to be back, and I'm not very happy about it, Scott. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're gonna. It's not Any August, chance you're doing it, in okay. PEI? Yeah, it's not August. Uh, September, uh, early September. We're just working on a couple dates, right? Probably around the fifth. Um, you know, it is a unique. It, it's, it's first of all, it's great. Uh, it's not the Olympic Games where players are coming off injuries or have already played. The players are fresh, but at the same time, uh, it's a challenge for those guys to get going that early and then just get into those meaningful games right away. And so, yeah. you know, if we start camp on the fifth and look at playing games on the ninth and tenth, it's pretty quick for these guys to turn yeah. around. Um, but we've, you know, at the same time, and Doug's been in touch with you know, with some of our key guys and, and players and talked about what that schedule looks like and really kind of included them in that process. How much turnover do you think you'll see from the 2014 team? I, I think it's a little bit too early to tell. I think, obviously, there's a real strong core, in particular, probably on, on the back end. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think up front you're going to see some guys turn over and some guys, uh, obviously, that, that weren't there at the last uh, Olympic Games and, and even this World Championship were tremendous, Claude Giroux, uh, say again, uh, obviously he's having a great start to the year. Steven Stamkos, so when we start throwing those names in there and trying to find a place for them, I mean, obviously there's going to be some turnover. You know, the under-23 team, that uh, that might help you in a way that you don't have to take a guy to get him some experience uh, with this group because they're going to be in the tournament anyway, and you can just go with, uh, with your top players. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, I, you know, well, first of all, it allows us, uh, at least in Canada and, and in the U.S., to to include more players and if you're looking long term which we like to do and and look towards uh, korea in 2018 there's a another pool of athletes that are u23 they're going to get a heck of an opportunity to play in an international competition best on best that makes us better it expands our pool um gives them more experience so really it's a real positive for us uh, scott is hockey canada actually recommending your group recommending the under 23 or they're doing it separately with their own management team just for they're the Canadian it, kids, I mean. Yeah, no, they're doing it completely separately. Okay. Uh, Ryan Jankowski, who's our director of player personnel and primarily looks after our program of excellence, he, he's on that staff okay. and more of a director of operations with them. Uh, but Pete Shirelli and Stan Bowman and his group are, right. are responsible ultimately to uh, to put, select those players. Hey, Scott, we're... The, the process of picking your team, where would – and you guys have done a really nice job, I'd say, probably the last, what, seven, ten years in terms of uh, guys that are there for you, that are, are loyal. Where is that line between loyalty and who's playing great hockey at this particular time? And you guys must have some great conversations, if not slash disagreements, slash arguments are over this. Are you asking if Sid's going to make the team with the way he's playing? <laughs> you know what? There's a lot of people that would probably be wondering about uh, a few players who might not have great seasons yeah. this year and being on this team. Yeah, I, I think it's a fair question. I, I think um, we're fortunate that we have a management group that, that kind of understands both sides of that. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that group's charged with winning, um, and it is a fine line, and we do want to be respectful and, and loyal to those players who've, who've been part of Hockey Canada in the past. And that's not only Olympic Games, that's World Championships, which is important to our organization as well. So uh, I think that's part of what I bring to the table and, and at least ensuring that we have those discussions. Uh, I don't think in my time that we've ever, um, you know, as an organization said to a management group, boy, we need this guy because we need to be loyal to him. At the end of the day, they're pros. They want to win. And, and there's no way you can handicap those guys. So at the end of the day, it's still your best players. And that might mean something different to different people. On big ice, that may, might mean guys who've had more experience on big ice. Maybe they haven't had the, the greatest year in the National Hockey League, but you know maybe their past history internationally, and that's what we've kind of got to bring those two things together in making those decisions. You, you hate to see controversy around the selection of the team, like you know with the Saint Louis and the and the Subban, you know the situations that went but they're on. They're coming. They're it's, coming. Is Rick, that, but Rick it, Nash, it, it, the end of, is it controversy or well, is it struggling. debate? It's it's, it's great a debate. debate. You, yeah. But you hate to see the pressure on an Iserman, mm -hmm. a pressure on the coaching staff over a PK. Oh, I really want to see that pressure on them. You know, that's it, what they're paid for. Yeah, except you know, it, it's a it's something they're volunteering for as well. I you believe know, there's I, an honorarium, it, it, not it, much. It, Do you have good meal money, Scott? Yeah, it's debate at the front, and it's. Uh, 
it's controversy if you don't win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, that's the simplest that's way right. to put it. it. It's great debate. And we're fortunate that we're a country. We've got so many great players. And, and at the end of the day, hey, you're right. These guys are volunteering for a job that puts them right in the, the firing line. And I think that's what they're all about. That's what makes them great. And, and they're able to make those tough decisions. What's real tough is when you get in a situation like Steve and, and Marty St. Louis and, and when you're picking guys on your own team or not picking guys on your own team, and that's when it makes it tough. That's really challenging. Scott Salmon, okay. Hockey Canada Vice President of Hockey Operations. Uh, again, just uh, run through the dates uh, as far as uh, selecting the team, naming uh, naming your roster. Yeah, I, I mean, as a, as a guide, I think prior to March 1st, we're going to look at naming our first 16 players and then uh, finalizing that group um, in early, early June. Uh, to get to our 23 and then camp start in early September and looking to play a couple of exhibition games with our, our neighbors there from Team USA, you know, in around the 9th and 10th of September. 